there are probably a lot of reasons why organizations and companies should be involved with Hispanic marketing. But first, I'm going to ask you, uh, how did you become involved with marketing to Latinos? Well, uh, when I moved to the U.S. almost 10 years ago, it was immediately uh, clear to me by my experience about what I saw out there that people were not reaching out to Latinos at the customer service level or at the marketing and advertising level as they should. Besides the culture shock, it was, it was uh, quite an impression that that did to me to say, oh my gosh, people really have no clue. And I came to the U.S. to work to a company that catered to small to medium-sized owner owner sorry, uh, companies. And uh, my idea was to help them. So the, the blog started with the goal to help those owners better understand the Latino community. But the, the blog grew and grew and grew. And the main audience uh, are people in the industry. So people mostly in marketing, uh, Hispanic marketing, advertising, PR, market research, and people in general market, part in the general part, market part of the industry, as well as students and academia, those are the main uh, people that visit the Hispanic trend. So that's what, how I, I'm <coughs> sorry, ended up in it. Okay. Uh, U.S. Census Bureau has been releasing these uh, results of the 2010 census. So in your opinion, what do you think marketers should be paying attention to right now with regards to the census? Well, it, before I, I answer the question, it would have been awesome to have to lay the numbers for Michigan. That's but. right. <laughs> We're still waiting. Yeah, but um, definitely is the growth of the market, but not the growth uh, that people traditionally think of that is the immigrants. Is the U.S. born and grown Latino community that is growing all over the country, you name it, from Billings, Montana to Miami, Florida, and everything in between, the Latino community is growing, but it's more diverse and more complex. It's not only the nationalities or the heritage, but it's also the generations. And they're all Latino, but they're not your traditional Spanish dominant Mexican market that people try to portray. It's much more complex, so, so the Bottom line, the, the answer is understand the complexity of the market and understand the punchline of my presentations that is the culture and not the language that okay. they need to, to understand. Okay, so what do you think are the challenges right now for organizations and companies looking to connect with Hispanic communities? What, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that they have in front of them right now if you want to do that? The, the, the challenge that I always uh, keep on seeing is, is what I just mentioned, that, that people don't differentiate between Spanish marketing and Hispanic marketing. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that comes to their mind is, oh, yeah, let's reach out to Latinos, let's translate our website and, and mm -hmm. translate their, the ad, whatever outlet it is, and we'll reach them. No, it's it's taking a step back and understanding to them, listening to them, knowing what makes them tick and then began to react and that marketing can be in either English or Spanish. Mm -hmm. as, as I'll, I'll give more details in, in, in the keynote that I'll, that I'll share with you guys. But uh, that is the, the one thing that many corporations are not paying attention to right now, the diversity and they just immediately think Spanish. Mm -hmm. And the, the other big uh, thing that the corporations need to look at is understanding who they're hiring to do their Hispanic marketing. I'm sure you're aware that there are a lot of statistics right now saying that uh, Hispanics continue to out-index other populations when it comes to uh, u internet usage and social media. Uh, what do you think that means for Hispanic Americans? Just for you, I added to this <laughs> keynote uh, presentation I did uh, two days ago in DC. Uh, we were touching uh, specifically on, on that. I, I had a little segment of it. Because everyone's buzzing and say, oh yeah, let's go online and let's begin to market to them in Spanish. And uh, you build a website and launch a, a, a Twitter campaign and you do this and you do that and you own the Latinos. And it's like, which Latinos? <laughs> which Latinos? Because when you begin to really, truly to pay attention to Latinos online, you begin to see that, yeah, they, they are online. But the way that people define being online is, uh, I was online uh, at least once a month and checked my email. It's like, that is not being online, people. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's really, truly uh, being addicted to the, out the, the media uh, per se and using it on your phone mostly, which is the case of the Latinos. They just jumped 
the, from the desktop to the mobile uh, uh, independent mm -hmm. uh, phone, whatever it is, they didn't use a laptop. They went from desktop or not or nothing to mobile devices, which is very interesting. One thing to consider, and then you begin to look at the demographics. It's younger, more educated, higher income, uh, English dominant. Latinos are the ones who are those heavy users of the web. So, yes, you can launch a Spanish campaign, you can launch a Spanish, a Spanish language website, and you'll get results. But you have to understand what market you're reaching, and you need to set the expectations. Because if you're expecting just to uh, suddenly make your business grow double because you're reaching out to people mm -hmm. in Spanish, uh, you might not reach that goal. But if you understand that you're doing this in a long-term campaign and that that will be growing little by little as time progresses, definitely. Definitely. And this goes for profit and for non-profit organizations. People that have been doing an awesome job, for example, one of the big boys is Best Buy. Best Buy has had their Best Buy in mm -hmm. Espanol and they knew that it, from the get-go it was not going to be a big money maker. But they were committed to service that segment of the market, knowing that as time progressed, more and more Spanish dominant Latinos were going to begin to be comfortable with using that the, uh, their website as a as a place to do business. And it's it's happening, uh, but it's it's not revolutionizing the industry. While others uh, back in the day when when this was going on, uh, Home Depot just said, you know what, Latinos don't use the web, forget it, let's close shop. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the wrong move, but uh, it, because it's a long-term thing. And on, on the uh, my friend uh, from March of Dimes, they have a full-fledged Spanish language website, Twitter, Facebook, every single thing you can think of online. She has it in Spanish, uh, and they're doing great, and they're engaging with the, com with the community. But they had set their expectations correctly. They understand who they're able to talk to, and they're committed in the long run to service this community. So that is, that is <laughs> bottom line, the thing you don't have to say, oh yeah, all Latinos are online. No. Look at the numbers, and better yet, look at what area you can service. If you're online, you can be able to service the entire world, not only the nation, but maybe your distribution capabilities are limited to a certain region. So look at the Latinos within that region, to see their characteristics and understand where they are in getting online. So you manage uh, a blog, one of the most popular Hispanic marketing blogs right now. It's called Hispanic Trending. Um, besides uh, internet and social media, what other trends do you foresee that uh, marketers should be paying attention to that could be emerging from Hispanic communities? As far as the Hispanic community, is is Again, the, the generation that we spoke about, the, the fact that the lat Latinos here in the U.S. are second, third, fourth, fifth mm -hmm. generation. If you go down to, to southern uh, U.S., they are X generation. People who were living here just past when the Spanish came, they just happened to be living in Mexico one day, and the next day they woke up and they were in, in what was about to become the, the United States of America. But... Um, the, the interesting thing is to understand those differences between the generations, one. And the other thing is the retroacculturation. I was one of the lucky ones that came to the United States when being Latino was cool. So I've never, nor my kids, have, have gone through, through that uh, hardship of being looked down upon. And many generations, second, third, fourth generation Latinos have suffered through that big time. And, and now they are able to look back and embrace their culture, their foods, their languages, not only for themselves, but for their kids, and in some cases for their grandkids. So that re-embracing, if you want to call it, of, of the Latino culture in all its aspects is another very interesting uh, trend that keeps growing in the older Latinos, and it's trickling down to the younger generations.